Hello, my name's Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's Fraser Nash FN64 mid-lower gun turret. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. The mid-lower turret type FN64 is mounted in the rear centre section of the Lancaster's fuselage between formers 24 and 27, where a ring of laminated ash is mounted in the floor of the fuselage attached to formers 25 and 26 and to the floor intercostals. A flange turret mounting ring is secured to the inside of the ring by wood screws. Twelve support brackets are bolted to the inside of the turret mounting ring and to these the turret is secured by four quick release pins equally spaced. Wooden ceiling pieces are fitted between each pair of support brackets. The hydraulic feed and return pipes lead from the recuperator fitted on the starboard side of the fuselage between formers 23 and 24 to an Avery self sealing coupling mounted on the transverse support tube below the mid upper turret. From this coupling, flexible feed and return pipes are connected to the mid lower turret. The FN64 Mark I mid lower gun turret is a hydraulic power operated turret carrying two Browning 0.303 inch guns directed aft and is fitted externally below the Lancaster. The turret is for defence against attack from below the aircraft. The field of fire extending from dead astern to 100 degrees each side of the fore and aft centre line and from 2 degrees above the horizontal to 67.5 degrees below. The turret is operated by an air gunner seated above and rotating with the turret and sighting the guns through a periscopic sight. The turret comprises a shallow drum containing the guns and operating mechanism, suspended from a rotating ring and protruding through the fuselage floor. The rotating ring carries rollers on which it is supported in a fixed ring secured to the airframe. Mounted on the rotating ring are the controls, the seat for the air gunner and the ammunition boxes supplying the guns. The periscopic gun sight type B Mark II has a tube which passes through the ring, an eyepiece at the head of the tube being at a convenient height for the gunner, and a sighting prism at the foot of the tube being on the centre line of the turret and to the rear of the two guns. The Browning guns, which can be removed or replaced separately, are mounted on a pair of cradles and have means of adjustment for horizontal and vertical alignment. The gun cradle assembly pivots on bearings on two caudal stiffeners across the rotating ring. Oil under pressure from the operation of the hydraulic mechanism of the turret is supplied by a pump mounted on the port inner Merlin engine. The connection between the fixed supply and return pipes secured to the airframe and the moving parts of the turret being made by two flexible pipes to allow for the partial rotation of the turret. The hydraulic circuit for the turret is fitted with a high pressure relief valve on the rear face of the engine's fireproof bulkhead and with a recuperator and oil filter in the fuselage. The oil pressure is controlled by the recuperator which acts also as a reservoir. The filter and recuperator for the mid-lower turret is fitted on the port side of the flare station. When the mid-lower turret is not fitted, the ends of the hydraulic pipes are connected together by a return pipe at the Avery couplings above the turret. The turret is controlled by control handles mounted on a column above the valve box, which in turn is secured to the rotating ring. By operation of the control handles, the air gunner can supply power from the valve box to a hydraulic motor 
which rotates the turret in either direction, and to the two rams which together elevate or depress the cradles on which the guns are mounted. The gunner would have no direct view of the attacking enemy aircraft, but would train his guns on the target by sighting through the periscopic gun sight. The sighting prism at the foot of the sight tube is linked to the gun cradles and moves in harmony with the guns. The image of the target is reflected through lenses in the sight tube to the eyepiece, together with a superimposed image of a graticle representing a standard 50 mile an hour ring and bead. The guns are fired by an electro hydraulic control, triggers on the control handles being connected through a relay to a solenoid which operates a Palmer hydraulic firing control. A total of 1,500 rounds of ammunition is carried in two boxes, one box supplying each gun. The boxes are mounted on brackets on each side of the gunner's seat, the cartridge belts passing through ducts and feed guides to the guns. The empty cartridge cases and belt links from each gun are jettisoned through a chute which deflects them clear of the turret. Provision is made for interruption of the gun firing circuit when the guns are pointed at the various parts of the aircraft which obstruct the field of fire by cam plates which operate cutout switches. Electric current for the gun firing mechanism and a gun firing interrupter mechanism is supplied from the general service of the aeroplane through a flexible connection to a terminal block mounted on the rotating ring. The intercommunication socket and oxygen supply socket for the air gunner are mounted on the airframe to the left hand side of the gunner, flexible connections allowing movement of the gunner with the turret. Provision is made for the quick release of the turret so that it can be removed from the aircraft when it is not required and replaced by alternative equipment such as H2S. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing and also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.